So today, the series called Good News. Here's the breaking news. Ghost sighting on the Sea of Galilee. Who you gonna call? Come on, a ghost sighting? Some of you just saw what I did. A ghost sighting on the Sea of Galilee. This is scriptural. Come on now. Who you gonna call? Look at your neighbor and say, who you gonna call? Look with me in Mark chapter 6. Verse 45, it says this. Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go ahead of him to Bethsaida. What did he do? Jesus sent the disciples ahead of him, and he dismissed the crowd. So just so you know the context, here's what happens in this story. It's a beautiful story. But Jesus is in this remote area, and he's preaching, and all these people come. Like he's, He takes a trip across the Sea of Galilee with the disciples to go to a place that's remote to pray. And when he gets there, a massive crowd's there. Like the Bible says, 5,000 people were there. But we know that it's way more because they only counted men. So there's probably 10 to 15,000 people that are there. And they're, 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 they've been there all day and they haven't eaten anything. And Jesus feeds 5,000 people, 5,000 men with five loaves and two fish. And then he tells him, he says, I'm going to dismiss the crowd. Come on, this is the son of God. He goes, I want you to go ahead of me, and I'm going to dismiss the crowd. So he does that, and after leaving them, he goes up on the mountainside, and he prays. Later that night, the boat that the disciples were in was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone, and, and he was alone on the land. So he saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, when they, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost, and they cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately, he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I. Come on now, this is Jesus. Come on, take courage, it is I. Come on, somebody's in a, in a situation of fear. God wants you to know to take courage. Jesus is there. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Come on, he goes back to the story. Mark wants us to know that he connects it to the story of feeding the 5,000, and the disciples didn't understand who Jesus was. The disciples didn't understand what he had done, and it says their hearts were hardened. If you're taking notes today, it's in the YouVersion app as well. The main idea is good news. The Lord is about to pass by. Whatever you're going through right now, here's the good news. Jesus is about to pass by. He's about to pass by your life, your situation, your pain, your hurt, whatever you're, he's about to pass by your promotion and your moving. Can't talk baseball anymore. We're gonna have to do that long distance, hello. But I'm just here to tell you that when he passes by, you need to lean in. When he passes by, all that he is passes by. Come on, let's pray. Jesus, Lord, today, Lord, our hearts are moved by you. Our hearts are moved by your presence. Jesus, pass by people in this room, God. Pass by our lives, God. Help us to see you in every way. Jesus, we honor you, and we thank you for what you're saying to us. Give us ears to hear. Come on, just ask him. Lord, speak to me. Lord, I want to hear what you're saying to me. God, encourage me. God, correct me. God, lead me and guide me in every way. It's in your holy name I pray. Amen? Come on, let's celebrate his word before we get into it. So let's talk about this. We know the context is the the fact that the disciples were there when he feeds 5,000 and he tells them to go to Bethsaida and Jesus is up on the mountain to pray. So... Whenever you're talking about a news story, there's several things that come into play. We talked about this last week, that, that there's a who, a what, a where, and a why. We know who the who is. The who is the main character. The main character is who? Oh, you're getting this. Come on, the main character is who? Oh, yeah. And then there's disciples, the crowd, and the other character is that boat. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and then what happened? Jesus sends them across the lake. In their boat, this is a trip they've made many times, nothing new for fishermen, nothing challenging, but in the middle, they run into a windstorm and get stuck. So where does this take place? 
in the middle of the lake, in the middle of a windstorm. It is in the wee hours of the morning. It is in the dark. It is when they wouldn't expect it. Jesus shows up. Can I encourage you? When you least expect it, at the darkest times of your life, watch out. Jesus is about to pass by. He wants to walk by your life and reveal to you who he really is. This is one of these moments in scripture where he reveals who he really is. This is one of these moments in scripture where where he shows the disciples, this is who I am and this is the power that I have. So when we look at this, we've got to realize that Jesus is up on the mountain. So what does that mean to us? It means that wherever Jesus sends you, he can see you. Come on, let, let me into that. Wherever he sends you, if he sends you to Washington, guess what? He still sees you. Come on now. If he sends you to Callahan, if he sends you to Springfield, if he sends you to the uttermost parts of the world, guess what? He still can see you. That's what the story tells us because it says this in verse 47. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and the disciples were straining with their oars and that Jesus was alone and the wind was against him. So his plan for your life is not void of his presence and it's not void of his oversight. He knows where you are destined to be and he sees where you're going. The only problem is sometimes we've got to listen and simply go. The disciples had to hear his voice. It says he made them go. When I realized that, I think, like, some, you ever have to make somebody leave? Like, 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 it's time for you to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're, somebody comes over to your house, like, 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 I don't care where you go, but you just can't stay here. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's all right, but today you got to go. Like, like, some of us have a problem with the word go because if we would go then we would trust him and when we trust him we've got to trust the process even if you have to strain a little bit even if you have to work a little bit even if you get stuck in the middle it's in that process that God shows up in what are you saying pastor if we look at the scriptures the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart all your mind all your soul and all your strength When you look at this commandment, you realize that this commandment is love. Love is not a passive word. Love is a verb. Hello? Love is a verb. Come on now. And if love is a verb, then it has to be action tied to it. A couple people saw what it is. Action tied to it. You can't say you love and do nothing about it. Hello? So when Jesus said go, then they needed to go. And in the process of going, they would be straining like because they're in the middle of it. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you know where you're supposed to go and you know what you're supposed to do. But somewhere in the middle, you're just trying to get to the other side. And he just came today to let you know he sees you even when you're straining. That word straining is, 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 is the word. It means to struggle, to vex, to torment, to, to be distressed. It, it's the effort that we put into life. Sometimes, I mean, no life is, like, like the struggle is real at times. Hello? Like, 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 the, like the distress is real at times. Like the, the pressure is real at times. You, you, you feel like that, that rubber band. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you ever play that game with, with, with like, like, let's see who can hold on to it the longest, you know, and see if it breaks, you know? We would do that as teenagers. It's like a vicious, you know, like, like some of us think, like, if we get into that straining mode that it's going to break. Can I encourage you? Whatever he does in your life, if he sees you, guess what? He's not going to let you get to the place you break, hello? He's going to be there to rescue you. This is what the story is telling us, that he shows up. In the midst of our darkest hour, he shows up in the midst of our straining. When you're doing all that you can do, God can show up in that place. You may be, now now think of it this way. Let's tie it to the new parent. If you're a new parent, hello? Have you watched new parents nowadays just, just try to get going? Come on now. Just take a trip to Disney, hello? We did this recently, and, and when I was down in Lakeland, like, let's go to Disney, and I, I'd never seen so many strollers in my life, hello? I'm thinking, wow, watching these people get out of their cars and go to the park, I'm like, I'm like, whoo, man, back in the day, it took a lot. If, it, if you're that parent that has to take all that just to go to the grocery store, you know what I'm saying, just to get out of the house, guess what? That's what straining looks like. Mom? Can I encourage you? When you feel like you're losing your ever-loving mind, just trying to get from one point to the next and it's in town, can I encourage you? He still sees you. 
He sees your straining. He sees what you're doing in life. For that parent that, that's just trying to juggle the schedule of life, and you know that that schedule of life gets, gets kind of, you know, like you're in the middle of it, like between, and you're trying to do everything you can to make Sunday and Wednesday consistent for your kids. But you're fighting against grades, hello? You're fighting against homework. You're fighting against Little League. You're fighting against cheerleading. You're fighting against everything that, that society tries to throw at our kids and everything. And you're doing everything. You're fighting against this thing called spring break. Hello? And welcome to spring break. This is it. I'm not cheering about that. Come on now. <sighs> My kids, I'd be like, woo, let's go. But, but I got adult sons. Come on now. But, but what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying like, like when you feel like you're juggling meal sports, homework, and you got to do everything you can to do it, can I encourage you? Keep going. Let that sink in. Keep going. Someone needs to hear this. Keep going. Why do you keep going to church every week? Why do you make it consistent for your kids? Here's why. He sees you. And if he sees you, he knows that, you're, that God's going to show up in those things. It's, it's the rhythm that we live that makes a difference in the people that live with us. So secondly, not, not like, like he sees you, but look at this. When you're stuck in the middle and the winds of life are blowing, he will show up. This story tells us that, that he shows up. Oh, I love that part, that, that when you feel like you're stuck, like, like I ain't going nowhere, I'm just like in between where I'm supposed to be and where I am, and I don't like, like where I am, I'm in the middle, can I encourage you? That's where he shows up. Oh, that's so good. It says he saw the disciples straining, verse 48, because the wind was against them, and shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He shows up. Look at your neighbor and say, he shows up. Recently, like, we went to Disney, and, and I was in class, so we went for, like, three hours in the evening, because it is what it is. Just right before Valentine's Day, I did class all day and then went to Disney. Hello? That was just, I was like, we're going to ride Rise of the Resistance, because I am a Star Wars fan. Hello? So we get there, and it's, like, 90-minute wait. And I'm like, well, here we go. Giddy up. Come on. I'm still going to wait. Why? Because I want to ride the ride. I like it worth it. So we get in line and we're walking and then all these people keep passing us in line. I'm like, what in the world? Like, like just, they got family way up and we get like three or four rooms into, because they put you in a room, they like, like, like make you think you're near the end. Hello? And they put you in another room. So we get into this like third room and there's a Disney employee in the, in the, in like in the hallway and, I, and I, we just start talking to him, like, hey, like, like, what are all these people, like, going by? He goes, man, they do that all the time. We stop them up there. I said, man, how are you doing? Everything's good. I said, how many more rooms do we have? He said, you got this one. Then you go through a hallway. Then you got another one. Then you go through a hallway. Then you got another one. And I'm like, does it never end? We smiled and laughed. I said, no worries. We're good. Everything, ah, whatever, you know. And the guy smiled. We were just kind to him. And, and we're like, we're good. Everything, everything's great. And, and we go walking, and we get out of this hallway, and we go to the next room. And this guy's standing next to a rail, and he looks at me, and he says, sir, did you want to read the, leave the ride early? I looked at him. I said, absolutely not. I said, but if you want to take me to the front, be my guest. He said, come with me. He opened up the gate, walked us in the back parking lot, walked us past all three of those rooms, and dropped us in the room. I'm looking there going, hey, this is, I looked at Ginny. I said, this is my tither's blessing. Hello? That guy looked at me. He was like, that's the strangest thing to say. Hello? I'm like, God provided. Why? Because I had a plan. I wanted to ride three things that night. I'm like, this is going to kill all my time. He takes, we, we laughed, we smiled. And I'm like, food, that's a favor. And then I realized, I'm like, you know what that is? That's the kindness of God. That's just being kind to people. And God let me know, guess what? He shows up in the middle. I'm not saying that guy was Jesus, but guess what? Ooh, he was Hispanic. Let's go on. Okay. <laughs> His name might have been Jesus. Okay, let's move it. <laughs> Bring it back in. Here we go. Whew. Okay. So, so, so what are you saying, Pastor? When you're stuck in the middle, what you think is never ending has a necessary ending when Jesus, the Savior, shows up. They were in the middle of the lake straining, going through it. The winds of life were blowing against them. They felt stuck. But when you feel like it's never going to end, the moment that Jesus shows up, 
a necessary ending takes place. Man, I love necessary endings. I love when he shows up in the midst of the storm and stops the wind. I love when he shows up and I see that he is there. Maybe today, maybe just maybe, he wants you to look for him in the dark times, in the painful times, in the windy times, in the straining times, in the struggle of life. Yeah, the struggle is real, but guess what? We serve a Jesus. Here's the good news. Jesus is on the way. Someone needs to hear this. Don't give up because Jesus is on the way. Look at someone and say, Jesus is on the way. So, so let's talk about this. So, so the disciples are in the boat, and he, it says he's about to, look at verse 48, it says he's about to pass by them when they saw him walking on the water, and they cried out because they all saw, but they all saw him and were terrified. See, when what you see terrifies you, hold on. Jesus is about to pass by. Fear is not the plan of God. Fear and intimidation is the plan of the enemy. Fear and intimidation is a plan the enemy plants in your mind and tries to control you. He's trying to distract you. And, and, and you know, his plan is to destroy. But if he can distract you, boy, he can keep you from the plan of God. In the middle of this storm, you got to look at it like, like Jesus is up on the mountain. He sees them, and it's a windstorm. They're in the boat, and they're rowing, and they probably couldn't see much of anything, but they see this form coming through them. What do you think they did? They cried out, Jesus! Why did they do that? Because he stepped in the boat and said, don't be afraid. It is I. Come on, when he steps in, whatever terrifies you, whatever, whatever like, 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 like tries to, to, to mess with you, guess what? When the Lord passes by, he's not passing by to leave you alone. He's passing by to let you know who he is. So come on, let, let's connect the dots a little bit. This is, this is what we do in Scripture because Scripture is a story. It's a narrative. And, and when you look at the New Testament and Jesus, says, it says he's about to pass by. Mark understands the Old Testament. And if you look in the Old Testament, you'll see this moment in Exodus chapter 33 where, where Moses is on the mountain. And when Moses is on the mountain, he's like, Lord, I just want to see you. Do like, like, show me your glory. And the Lord looks at him and says, my presence will go with you. I will not give you rest. I, I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't send us up from here. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. And the Lord said to him, I will cause my goodness to what? To pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on my mercy. I'll have compassion on my compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. And when my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft, and I will cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I remove my hand, and you will see my back, but my face you might not see. What are you saying, Pastor? God's a holy God. In the New Testament, Jesus says, it is I. And they saw the son of the living God. They saw the Messiah. He revealed to them that he was with them. So when it says he's about to pass by, he's not like leaving them out in the middle. Some people read that quick and go, oh, he's just about to pass by him. And then they screamed out. And No, he was about to come and reveal to them because it says that he said, I see them so I'm going to go to them. He wasn't going to pass by them. He was going to pass them and say, here I am. It's the same thing in the Old Testament. He shows up and everything shifted and everything changed. See, when God passes by, he passes by to reveal who he is. So the good news is this. Jesus is about to pass by. Come on, let that sink in. Come on, say this to yourself. Jesus is about to pass by me. And when he passes by me, I just need to hold on. See, they're still in the storm. It's still the wee hours of the morning. They're still in the darkest time of the night. But God shows up in the dark time to reveal who he is. And when he reveals who he is, they hold on because he declares to them, it is I. Do not be afraid. Someone needs to hear this today. 
you're thinking about giving up, you're thinking about throwing in the towel, you're thinking about quitting because it's too dark, it's too pressured, it's too, too stressful, the struggle is way beyond what, what you think you can imagine. And I'm just here to implore you and imply to you and encourage you to hold on. Jesus is about to pass by your situation and reveal to you that he is still God. Can we just celebrate who he is? Some of you are like, all right, all right, Jesus, come on, come on, I need you to pass by, I need you to, like, show up. Guess what? You are in the right place for him to show up in your life, and when he does, what terrifies you is no match for when Jesus speaks. Man, when he shows up, guess what? Whatever you're afraid of, whatever tries to bring fear in your life, it will leave because what he speaks is more powerful. Look what it says. When they saw him walking on the lake, thought he was a ghost, cried out because they all saw him were terrified. Immediately he speaks to them, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. They were afraid because of what they saw, not where they were. Understand this, they're fishermen. They're still rowing. They're not giving up. They're holding on, but when they saw Jesus, they were afraid. When they saw what they thought was a ghost, they were afraid, but when Jesus speaks to them, fear has to leave. The disciples were going where Jesus wanted them to go. They found themselves in the middle, straining to get there, and the Lord sees them, and when he passes by, that's when we can take courage. That's when he says, don't be afraid. So maybe the word for you today is this. Maybe you just need to type this in your, your, your Facebook post. If you're online, you should drop it in the chat or whatever, like, like, like I'm going to take courage because my Jesus is with me. I don't have to be afraid. Come on, maybe just say that. I don't have to be afraid. Because when he is with me, he can handle whatever I'm in the middle of. If you're in the darkest moment of your life right now and you feel like you cannot handle what's being thrown at you, guess what? God still has a plan for you. He wants you to know he sees you. He wants you to know he's coming. He wants you to know that he's got a plan. He wants you to know that you can take courage and you can drop fear because Jesus is about to speak to the storm in your life. Come on, so, so who you cry out to matters. They cried out to Jesus. When we cry out to Jesus, he is always greater than what you're going through. So when the, this story ought to encourage us that the cry of our hearts when we find ourselves in the dark place, when we find ourselves in a in, in a painful place, when we find ourselves in the struggle, let, let me be real clear, theologically, because you're in a dark place, because you're in a struggle, because you're, you're in a painful place, that does not mean that there's something wrong with you. That does not mean that there's sin in you. That means that God wants to reveal himself to you. And it's in that dark place that God wants to remind you that he is still who he says he is. He is still Jesus. He is still the son of God. He died for our sins so that we could have a relationship with him. He didn't come just to die. He came to give us life. I don't know about you, but I want to live. How many want to live? Come on, shout if you want to live. So you've got to let this sink down in your spirit. Like, like, we know who the story's about. We know what takes place in the story. We know where. It's like right in the middle, middle of the night, middle of the lake. Why? Why this story? Why does Mark point out this story? Maybe even more if you read Matthew and you read John, you realize in, in Matthew... This is the story where Peter jumps out of the boat. This is the story where Peter's like, if it's you, bid me to come. And he's like, come on. And he jumps out and walks on water until he sees the storm. You know, Mark doesn't put it in there. Because just maybe Mark wants to focus all his attention on who Jesus is. And he wants us to see that he is the son of God. That he is still the master of the universe that he commands the winds and the waves. And if he commands the winds and the waves, he can handle your health, he can handle your marriage, he can handle your finances, he can handle your emotional capacity, he can handle your relational issues, he can handle life because he is the author of life. And if he's the author of life, then he came to finish life. 
Jesus is who he says he is. The good news is he's here today. And when you cry out to him, he will pass by. And when he passes by, he doesn't pass by to, 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 to cast judgment. He doesn't pass by to, to make us feel guilty about who we are. He passes by to reveal who he is. He's our savior. And he's our healer. He's our soon coming king. He's the one who died for our, our sins, but died so that we could live. So what's my encouragement? Keep going. What's my encouragement? Don't give up. What's my encouragement? Don't, like, like hold on, fear not, and cry out to Jesus. Because when Jesus, the master of the universe, passes by your life, understand this, all that he is will pass by you as well. What's he trying to say? When Moses was on that mountain and God was speaking to him and and gave him the Ten Commandments and he was the, the, the prophet that spoke to the nation and God reveals himself to him to let him know that he is God. That reveals to us that, that all of God, all of heaven, all of his power is available to pass by your life. He's, he's more than able, he's more than equipped. There's no limitation to what he can heal, what he can do in somebody's life. We've just got to look. We've got to step into where he is. Maybe we just need to cry out to him. Say, Jesus, today, I need you. I need you in my dark hour. I need you in my painful situation. I need you here. Can I encourage you? He sees you. He's coming towards you. And today, in this moment, everything can change when you see him so today maybe you're not a not a follower of christ i want to encourage you first and foremost that the greatest thing you can ever do the greatest decision you can ever make is is say jesus i want to follow you i want to i want to live my life for you if that's you and why right here in this moment i'm just going to encourage you i'm going to count to three and i want you to slip your hand up real high you're saying lord i want to follow you from this moment on i want to i want to be able to see you but i need to follow you first if that's you, you ready? Look in your heart. If you're not a follower of Christ, this is your moment. Ready? One, two, three. Slip it up. Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you there in the back. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, God's good. Can we pray this simple prayer together? It sounds like this. We'll all pray it together. Just pray this prayer. Jesus, today, I need a Savior. I need you. I invite you to come into my life. You died so that I could be forgiven. So Jesus today, forgive me of all my sins because I want to live. You came to give life. So from this moment on, I'm going to live. I'm going to follow you because I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate together. What an incredible Sunday here at Ocean Way Church. We hope that you were challenged just as much as we were. Listen, if you made a decision to follow Jesus today, we would love to take that next step with you. If you text the words, my decision to the number on the screen, we will reach out to you, pray with you, and talk to you about your next steps in your walk with the Lord. We also wanna thank you so much for your continued generosity to the church. There are five different ways to give and you can find out what those are by texting give to the number on the screen. Now listen, I know that the online experience is incredible, but there is nothing like being in the house. So we hope to see you here next week at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. Have a great week.